Hello everyone, I'm Katie Teitler with Tag Cyber, and I'm here today with my friend Didier Le Steven. He is a member of the board and executive VP of sales and marketing operations at Wallex. Didier, thank you for joining me today. Thank you. So we're going to talk a little bit about identity, identity access management, privilege access management, um, because it's become a pretty hot topic for organizations with the sprawling digital ecosystems that companies have, they're almost endless in terms of how we are interconnected, our systems, our networks, our data, and what people, what employees, partners, customers, contracts, uh, contractors need access to in order to do their transactions. Identity has become a quasi new perimeter, and we have talked about that before. Wallach had a wonderful live event, and that was one of the topics of conversation. Right. Identity is the new perimeter. And while identity is certainly important, access is the nexus between identity and resource. Because without access, and identity is just an entity on the network that poses a little threat, this is why privileged access management has become so important. So. Didier, what challenges at Wallex and in your conversations with your peers are you seeing or have you seen in the last year in regard to mitigating cyber risk with access controls? Thank you, uh, Cathy. Uh, well, for sure, last year marked a turning point in the industry as ac uh, organization accelerated their digital transformation efforts. Some studies confirm that more than 44% of worldwide organizations are working on cybersecurity initiatives for their digital transformation, and more than 53% of them are increasing remote access work. As a result, there has never been a such higher demand of remote access. Uh, and the question facing many IT leaders is how to balance, basically, those access with security control. So the challenge, the challenges have been to propose and to deploy access security solution in a very short period of time to support the need to control access and to block cyber attacks. So we are now heading into a world where remote access and endpoint management is no longer a nice to have, but it should be part of any cybersecurity strategy. So you talked about how remote work changed access but how does it change the strategy around privileged access and specifically this idea of zero trust that everybody's embracing yeah it, i think it is fair to say that organizations have um, had a significant uh, change the way they work over the past year with remote working becoming the de facto standard for most of them and for that we need to think differently than before however this should not come at a trade-off of cybersecurity. So to help combat against the cybersecurity risks that remote working can bring, we are proposing to implementing a zero trust architecture in order to control and to secure access to company data. In fact, according to the analysis from IDG, 47% of the organization are actively researching today zero trust type of technology. So it is still brand new and it's still not completely there. So the zero trust principle is designed to protect the digital workplace and this strategic initiative recognizes that trust is a vulnerability in itself. Zero trust offers an approach where no user is trusted implicitly when it comes to identity, access and data. That is not to say that access to privileged resources is never granted because this will not work for any organization but it requires users to not only prove they have the credential, but also that they need to prove they have the need and the authorization to access the data. The reality is every user with access to company data is by himself an element of risk, whether intentionally or not. This can uh, be employees, partners, vendors, as you were saying, a contractor, subcontractor, but no organization, whether large or small, is immune to data breaches. Through a zero trust model, organization can defend against both external and insider threat, not only safeguarding the business from financial and reputational damage, but giving employee peace of mind to continue to work freely without the worry 
that they might cause some damages without knowledge. And this is very, very important. The Zero Trust Principle is the only way today for organization to ensure full data protection and to truly know who has access to data, when data has been accessed, accessed and from which endpoint. For organization to truly regain control of data, we must pose the question, who do we on trust our data to? This is very, very important. Successful implementation of remote working can only be achieved with a digital tools developed by companies that are fully aware of the importance of protecting the data they carry. And with this zero trust architecture or proposal, this is definitely a must that a company needs to go for. So zero trust is a principle or a framework or a guideline. It's not a product, obviously. So it transcends environments, which is really important because now I want to talk a little bit about the cloud because, mm -hmm. you know, zero trust has been around for a while as a principle. Um, cloud has been around a little longer as, as an actual thing. And we're still struggling as a security community with how to protect clouds and why and what products can translate and which have to be cloud native and there are a whole lot of issues that security practitioners face with the cloud obviously and zero trust transcends that so that's obviously the foundation for any access but do the architectural requirements of the cloud really precipitate a huge shift in how companies protect their cloud-based resources versus everything else. Yeah, I, I think there is a shift and, 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 and for sure, let's say these new challenges, digitalization, remote working, demand flexibility and agility. And we know that cloud basically in, intrinsically bring facility, agility and flexibility. So organizations have to rely more and more on software as a service or let's say cloud solution, which are fast and easy to deploy through the cloud. So to adapt to those new tools, cybersecurity itself must evolve toward a more flexible and agile model and become as a service in turn. Even if this approach is quite new, um, it is now in the, uh, uh, necessary to think and plan with it. To adapt and maintain business continuity while pushing forward this accelerated uh, digital transformation, organization will need to move toward a mixed IT infrastructure on-prem and cloud while seeking cloud-based authentication, identity and access management solution. So it will be a mix, depend of what we are talking about between identity, data and access, or for sure, let's say again, a, a mixed IT infrastructure on prem and cloud. Therefore, we'll see a, a, a huge demand for managed cybersecurity cyber services that enable companies to outsource IT systems security. And with this approach, business will be able to benefit from optimized cybersecurity at all time in all places while complying with the regulation, basically, uh, requirement. So that's, that's what we see. Um, we need to go there. We are not yet, uh, let's say, security is not completely cloud-oriented or, or as a service oriented, but definitely, let's say, the people that will bring like Wallix solution in this field will benefit, let's say, for their customer. Yeah, and, and really what you're talking about is companies who have legacy architectures, a lot of them have moved substantial portions of their infrastructure to cloud or are doing so. But then you have newer companies that are entirely cloud-based. So it's this huge spectrum. It's not one or the other. It's usually one and the other. So, so I think those are very, very good points. Let's switch a little bit and start talking specifically about Wallex and Wallex Bastion and Wallex Best Safe. Can you tell everybody listening a little bit about both Bastion and Best Safe? For sure, I will go fast on that. But um, what it brings to the market an identity and access solution based on the zero trust framework. We talk already about zero trust. We talk about identity. We talk about access, and that's basically what we we aim to do. This identity and access solution is composed of different product, 
like the bastion and like base safe uh, and we secure access to any resources so any data basically from end to end that's the, the idea and with this approach we are responding to identity insurance which is a proof of identity necessary before allowing access to corporate application and data. Technology like MFA, single sign-on, secret management is very, very important. Access security we talk about, which give a granular control over access to all internal and external uh, of IT users on IT resources with privilege access management, the PAM, and the privilege evasion and delegation management, which is part of it as well. And at the end, endpoint protection where we will control the endpoint privileges regardless of the user, mainly with eliminating local admin rights and control privileges at the application level with the best safe endpoint privilege management uh, technology. So again, we have a mix of uh, pure legacy security with secret server approach. This is already in the cloud. And we have as well, let's say, innovative type of technology that we bring to, together, like the PAM and the privilege elevation and delegation management to, with the endpoint protection management, and for sure, the identity control with MFA and single sign-on technology. That's uh, about the full solutions of, uh, of uh, Wellix based on Bastion and BaseSafe. That's great because it's a, a holistic approach to access management, and it covers a lot of the frameworks, the, you know, the CSF and the CIS controls, we talk about all of those foundational things we need to do. So it sounds like that's all rolled into the suite of products. We talked a moment ago, you mentioned SaaS. How, how are your products deployed? Are they SaaS? Are they a virtual appliance? How, how would a company, if they wanted to deploy either Bastion or BestSafe or any elements, go about doing so? So, all our solution can be deployed on premise for sure. They can be deployed in the cloud. They can be deployed either in a subscription mode, managed services mode, and or software as a service for some of them. And I'm thinking about MFA, for example, which is a complete SaaS solution that we offer right now to the market. But uh, let's say one of the, 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 the ways deployed is, is the fact that um, it, we can deploy our solution very easily for our customers. And one of the main reasons is that our solution are scalable, both, let's say, as a single instance or largely on a very large uh, organization, because the concept of our solution is that we bring an appliance, so all in one. We have Let's say you don't have to manage application, you don't need to manage OS, you don't need to have to manage, um, let's say, a remote uh, a storage. Everything is coming together. That is very, very, very well, let's say, appreciated by our customers in order to ease the deployment of the things. And so that's that's where. So we we, we cover all the spectrum of the, let's say, where it can be deployed, but we bring a big differentiation, which is the easy way of deploying our solution. So flexible, scalable approach. You mentioned the companies that are using your solution. What kinds of companies, big, small, MSP, MSP, certain industries that you're seeing more adoption from? There is no specific companies who adopt our solution better than the other one. Uh, what we can and what we, we, we find, so for sure we are more present in some organization, like in France, we are very well in the public organization. Uh, but worldwide, we are very, very uh, present in the industry, the healthcare sector, the financial services. So we can we can serve any vertical needs, and also, and also also any size of of companies. And that's mainly because of this, let's say, all-in-one product. We can serve the very small and medium business, one to fifty employee, up to the large, more than ten thousand employees. Basically, we are not we, we are not uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, we don't have any any break uh, in order to to address any t size of the company. For sure, uh, we have as well some specific differentiation that make us very well adopted in some industry sector. And I'm thinking about the industry vertical with the OT organization uh, organizational technology, the healthcare sector where we are very very strong, and any essential services operator whatever they are in the utilities with energy, transport, and telecommunication. That's where really, let's say, we differentiate ourselves as well. 
Is that because of unmanaged devices or IoT devices? Why is that? Or regulations? You mentioned that before. Yeah, the regulation. I mean, it's it's a mix of different. Our really big differentiation in the industry and the OT segment. That again, our our footprint of our solution is so small that is very 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 well adapted for the industry sector where people are here to manufacture something, not to do IT. So because we, we have a, 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 a all-in-one, people love that. The other thing is that we do understand this market because we have many, many customers in the automotive, aeronautics, and large industry sector. And we understand the importance for them of regulation, but as well ICS and SCADA, DevOps, because they start to do as well DevOps in this environment. And we are very agile in this uh, type of things for the for the industry. That's where we differentiate ourselves. Excellent. Let's abstract up a level here. So we're talking about your product now. Let's talk a little more generally. How do you think access management will evolve in the next few years? What what does the future of access look like, Didier? Well, there there is different uh, future. I, I let me talk talk more. Let's say on the first on the on the general level, I think access management, as we already discussed it, is more and more embracing identity security as well. So there is more and more identity and access, as we discussed about, um, than only the access management itself. Uh, to form an identity and access solution, uh, which will be integrated with audit reporting and identity governance. So there is a merging, let's say, of different sub-segment of this uh, identity access management, privilege access management, and governance um, type of an audit, audit and reporting more and more. So that's for the general framework. So we need to make sure that our solution will be able to embrace all those technology, whatever it's in-house or with technology partnership. You know, typically in the uh, OT, we have partnership, partnership uh, let's say, with a large OT provider or industry provider where they embed our solution in. Same, we should be able to embed any audit and reporting technology, like we do work as well with governance a type of, of company. So that's on, on, on the general frame. Now the market itself, well, you have certainly seen in the, in the press uh, the recent announcement of some uh, merger and acquisition in this uh, field with uh, Tycotic and uh, Centrify uh, with TPG, uh, Okta uh, uh, with O0. So there is as well, let's say, a, 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 a start of consolidation. And start of consolidation in a such market means that it is more than mandatory. And so we are still in the hockey stick of the growth. And with our, uh, let's say, Wadix um, uh, want to be a, a global player. Uh, we are already a European leader, but we want to be a global player. So it's a huge opportunity for all of us, let's say, to, uh, to, to get a footprint here. And I think with our differentiation and with the fact that we do understand this identity and access to protect data, um, Wadix is, is well placed in order to, to be uh, member of the leader that will win the race basically well i am rooting for you obviously we at tag love working with you at wallex and and we're really glad that you are making more efforts in the us because i think we need more very strong players in the identity and access space because i do believe it is one of the keys to improving security so Didier, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And for our audience who's watching and listening, thank you. We'll surely be back with another video very soon. So everyone, have a good day. Didier, you are in France right now, so you have a good yes. evening. Cathy, thank you so much. And uh, have a good day. And uh, we'll talk to you soon anyway. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.